I recently spoke to you about a teacher who allowed us to grade ourselves. I had a fascinating crafts teacher in my last year of high school. He was a Buddhist and such an interesting man to have a conversation with about anything. And we talked and talked and talked for what seemed like a year. And this teacher ultimately gave me an F when I saw my grade. I smiled and thought, that Mr. E.B. And he was right. I deserved an F. I had done all sorts of projects in that class, but I had not done the projects that he had asked of all the students in a specific time frame. He used to say, if you don't pay your bill, they'll turn off your power. And he was absolutely right. I deserved an F, and I understood his point. Fortunately, by that point, I really didn't care about the grade or any diploma, or essentially some proof that I knew something. For somebody else, I had another fascinating teacher, a psychology teacher. He showed us the film My Dinner with Andre, and many others. And in one instance, he painted a scenario, a belligerent man on a subway, yelling and pushing people, and drunk, and much more descriptive than I'm making it, but he asked the class, what would you do? I don't remember if we had to write it down. But in my high school mind, my solution was a very primitive one. I thought you have to take this man out, tackle him or something, somehow remove him with force. And I think this is what our culture teaches and embraces. The policing of people, governing of the minds, and actions. And then he finished the story with a scenario that was not what I had chosen. Somebody approached the belligerent man and was just really nice to him. Put his hand on his back and said, how are you friend? You want to go have a drink? And they walked out of the subway. Of course I'm butchering it. But it was a game changer for me. It was a shift in my thinking forever. And I really enjoyed this teacher. He was fired at the end of the year. As always, I hope you're doing well. Thanks for joining me today. Be sure to check out my coffee on Amazon. And welcome. Here I'd like to look at the city of Pompeii. Here she is, in all her glory. And they tell us that this Mount Vesuvius blew and covered everything with ash, ultimately killing everybody in this town. In the year 79, I believe. 79. And really, the surrounding area seeming to have fared pretty well. Almost like, uh... A little splash of lava shot out from this Mount Vesuvius here and just cooked this little part of the town. If we're to believe their story, if this is really a volcano, we are told historically that it was bombed and there's supposed to be bodies laying all over the place, which I find really strange, slightly disrespectful, if it's true. Really looking creepy back here. And ultimately my question is towards the narrative, as always. Did this Mount Vesuvius blow and shoot a little load of magma and ash on this town? Or is this the result of some massive plasma storm or plasma weapon? No matter what one thinks, this is so advanced for the year 79 AD. Often in my videos we joke about the abilities of people several hundred years ago accomplishing magnificent deeds. But here in 79 AD, the Romans in sandals and skirts. And I think nothing is more ridiculous than the idea of the Romans building the so-called Roman Empire. Right up there 
on the ridiculous pedestal, with slaves building the pyramids, even earlier time period. And really this picture, I found really mind-blowing, very revealing what we can see in this wide-angle photo. Just the remains are so high-tech. All of this is brick. These amphitheaters looking like some massive speakers. And I think this is the condition that most towns were found in. If you've ever walked down an old main street, you see portions of brick topped off with newer courses of newer brick and all kinds of tunnels and basements and uneven levels. And I think this is a small preservation of what the realm looked like after a reset. Hit and miss, and even here, really hit and miss. By the looks of this crater, it seems more like a bomb has gone off. And very interesting to zoom into this crater. Similar to the Grand Canyon, it doesn't seem to have a look that indicates the formation of this canyon by water, but rather fire and electricity. This crater has a similar feel. We would expect to see flowing vertically up and down, and we don't really see that. Rather, we see horizontal lines. And here they offer us one little picture. One. And here we go. Not allowed to zoom into it, or save it, but you can see my point. And if I'm not mistaken, somebody once showed brick in the walls of this volcano. I think it was a channel called Truth Seeker. Someone let me know if they've seen that. And she was also showing how this crater had been bombed officially. And I had that saved here somewhere. And I think this city is just absolutely mind-blowing. Just look at these, what they would tell us are amphitheaters, but how ridiculous. This one is just a small quarter size, it looks like. And clearly, much of this city is several stories under the dirt. And even the narrative tells us they stopped excavation of the site in the 60s, as they had done more damage, they tell us but perhaps there was another reason. I'm very astonished, actually, that this remains. Pompeii was an ancient city located in what is now the Commune of Pompeii in Italy. Pompeii, along with other cities, was buried in four to six meters of volcanic ash and pumice in 79 AD. You know what blows me away is that 2,000 years later, we would still be supposedly building in this exact same fashion. It's as if nothing had changed. And not far away from this Pompeii site of ruins are clearly the exact same structures, not in ruins. And in my opinion, lending to the idea that the buildings only a few miles away are also 2,000 years old, as we often state. Even in the Americas, and in every part of the realm, all these buildings could be up to 2,000 years old. At the very least, 1,000 years old, because we know there's a missing 1,000 years in the timeline. And here we can see a little downtown Pompeii. And I was watching a video of some guy walking around in Naples, and the cities were laid out in the same fashion. Very, very tight, brick, of course with facade in Naples, but much looking exactly like this. Super narrow streets, not really made for vehicles. And yet here it looks like there has been travel, or what they might say is wagon ruts, or vehicle ruts, doesn't have to be a wagon as if the stone had been soft, and something was passing through here. It's unclear. I, I think we're seeing original here, and on the curb, and then up here, of course, this looks like they've concreted over whatever to make this sidewalk. And I really think that most cities 
Even my town shows the same pattern. Just a hodgepodge of brick and stone. And I find it amazing that the mainstream tells us 2,000 years on this. 2,000 after a volcano and lava and whatever else. Plus 2,000 years of time. And everything looking pretty good. I'd make one of these my own dwelling. Put a roof on it, little stucco, doors and windows. And so it's not so crazy to propose that all these glorious structures that we examine from the past, and not even this far past, three, four, five hundred years old, we're told, could actually very easily be up to a thousand years old. Much of the things we're seeing in the supposed 200-year-old Americas actually resemble things like this, that we are told are the remains of not just 2,000 years of time, but a volcano reset, very localized and concentrated, strangely, anomalously. In fact, I just visited a town recently, if you remember, in a past video. Went to an old mining town in Utah, Eureka, and its main street still look like this. Still had brick and stone just like this, and it was in the same condition. It's as if nobody had ever touched it, and nobody ever goes to this little town. I was surprised they even had a main street, and yet this is what we saw. Very telling and clear. This looks like parts of the Bronx in New York. In the earliest depictions, we get clear up to the 70s, and again today in Utah, clear up to present day. I'll try to pull up some images from my past video showing this comparison. And this is absolutely amazing. Even if we're to believe everything, just amazing. Just indicating the decline of civilization. Even if we accept everything they tell us. That there were a people building like this 2,000 years ago. Walls two feet thick as a standard. And today we're lucky to get four inches of wood. And so it doesn't matter to me what really happened here in Pompeii. What is more important is the evidence left behind. And if we still have the exact ruins left today, in all countries, including North America, it's safe to assume that all of it is from the same builder in the same time. And they want to portray this as primitive Roman. And I don't believe in the primitive Roman. In his toga, sandals, and savage gladiator tournaments held in these amphitheaters. As if that's a logical explanation for these. All this, we're told these are the oldest amphitheaters in the world. But again, resembling amphitheaters everywhere. And very strange the way this one is built into a building. It's like a reverse roof. And perhaps it had a big dome on top. But the idea that these would have been for plays or sporting events, even barbaric ones, is completely false, in my opinion. All of this is super advanced, just laid out in the most intricate fashion. If we look at it from above, we can see how advanced it is. Just laid out like any city. No crooked roads, looking like any modern metro area. It's just that this place got cooked. And really, when we look at the rest of the city, it's clearly the same. Just like in all of our regions, in all of our cities. We have courthouses, banks, post offices, churches, that all look like this. Exactly the same style, as if nothing has changed. In fact, this is even better. Even with this past civilization, we did see a decline. Things would get smaller, and the quality would get less and less. Here, for example, we see the columns are actually made up of bricks and having a facade over the top. And here, they've been completely cooked out. Not covered, but stripped, rather, by extreme focused heat or energy. And as this civilization went on, things would get cheaper and smaller, eventually using wood. And many of the great cathedrals of the supposed Dark Ages are completely covered with stone, but yet having wood cores, often holding up the structure at the top. 
including much of the tech, as we saw with Notre Dame recently burning. Very old timbers catching fire. Yet I believe construction from the old world, but yet cheaper and smaller than some of the earlier works. And personally, I don't think that this volcano is responsible for the aftermath that we see here. No. But I'd love to hear your thoughts. And here, IRS Media has shared a little Pompeii video. And here he's showing us some of the intricate mosaic floors that have survived. Just absolutely mind-blowing. Again, that they could survive for 2,000 years if we're to believe their timeline. And here he was showing one of these water wells, similar to what we were looking at all throughout the realm, really. How these water points naturally meet at intersections, whether in remote areas or populated. And here in Pompeii, one such well in this central point where the streets meet. And here's a statue in Pompeii. Absolutely mind-blowing how the emotion is captured. A somber, yet tranquil emotion. And this here on the right side reminding me of a bank, or at least the ruins of a bank, that I saw in a ghost town in Nevada. The town was called Rhyolite. Rhyolite, Nevada. And fascinating, in the middle of nowhere in Nevada, a city of brick, in ruins, and yet older photos showed in pretty good shape, and then they just demolished everything. Why? Who even cares? They should have just left it alone in the middle of Nevada. And again, everything I see reminding me of these Pompeii ruins lately. Here a little look at the Grand Theater. And just imagine everything in its prime. And we really can. Again, like I said, in the surrounding cities, or even very nearby this area of ruins, we see things preserved in good shape looking like banks, or functioning as banks and municipalities and everything else. And I guess I'll just end with my final thoughts. The girl, Truth Seeker, I remember now by the name of Jen, proposed that this was the Tower of Babel, or just maybe another type of tower. Babelesque. And it's strange enough that Pompeii down here is really the only thing to be affected as if some blob just shot out and deposited itself in this little region. We would expect everything in the region to be annihilated if it was as they tell us in the year 79 AD. And it could have been destroyed in a similar fashion as spoken about in the Bible. And if there was anything left resembling a structure, they came in during World War Blank, I don't think we're allowed to say it, and bombed the hell out of this crater. Now, why would they go in and bomb a volcano? And I think they were bombing any remains of what may have been a giant tower, now collapsed and looking like a volcano. And again, this video that I saw by Jen, whose channel I don't think is around anymore, Please let me know if I'm wrong. She was showing brick in here, embedded into the walls as if little pockets or remains of preservation from this potentially former building. And what I didn't touch on was how anomalous I felt like the preserved bodies in Pompeii were. They kind of seemed fake to me. And recently another channel proposed that the Tower of Babel was down here, and in the Bible they talked about how there was a square valley, and here we see this square valley in Turkey, seeming to be on the border of Syria. And I forget where he was saying it was, I guess right here in the center, that this may have been the site. And what kind of picture do they offer us here? Nothing. It must be very secretive, and very interesting. These little pocket, what could be discovered in these little centers? Of course, we can't put the man down here. And typically the mainstream tells us the Tower of Babel is in Iraq, 
And I'm just not sure. I don't think I'm in the right place, but again, we see the same kind of things that we started with in the beginning of the video. Very old civilization and city in complete ruins. And that's enough of that. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you want. And let's go bonus. Attention Walmart shoppers and associates. My name is Beth from Electronics. I've been working at Walmart for almost five years. I think this is how most people feel. Manage it and fuck this job. I quit. Though unable to completely express themselves, everybody has somebody in their lives that they would like to say something like this to. And yet we are kept from expressing ourselves in so many different ways. Here I'm doing laundry with Chief, the least exciting part of my life. Usually I do a lot of thinking about life. I'm not sure what I said there. I learned to fold from my grandmother on my mother's side. She was much neater than I am, but I treat it like Zen. I don't really care if it's perfect. What's more important is the flow, less resistance. There still is much resistance, strain on the back, while reaching into the basket to get the next piece of clothing. Some might give it a good shake, and sometimes I do, like that. But as far as straightening out every part before I fold it, not interested. It's only gonna be used for one day and then be washed again. I'm more concerned with the function, that it's clean. I hate the laundromat. I've been going for at least 15 years. There's pros and cons. And watching that was probably as interesting as living it. I love you all, and I'll see you next week.